Okay guys, things are getting serious. So here are some 800 horsepower LS power recipes. But here's my question, will there be any NA combinations at the 800 horsepower level? And on a Turbo 48, to make 800, can you just turn the boost up? In this video, we're gonna cover a number of different ways to make 800 horsepower from your LS. Now sure, I know, the best way to do it, go down to the junkyard, get an LS, put cam springs and boost in it, and you're making power. Not only that, whatever turbo you choose for that junkyard LS, that's how much power you can make. So if you choose a thousand horsepower turbo and run boost on your junkyard LS, you could, if you do everything right, make up to a thousand horsepower. So you can make 400, 500, 600, 700 just by turning the boost up all the way up to whatever the maximum power output is of that turbo. And that's a great way to do it. So if you're looking for the low buck best method, that's probably it. And I've done it a thousand times. The problem is I've done it a thousand times and there's no need for me to keep testing a Turbo 48 or a Turbo 53 to show you guys how much power it makes because it always does the same thing and it's a great way to go. But guess what? There are other ways. There's other combinations. I like testing NA stroker motors, carbureted motors, EFI motors, nitrous motors and supercharged motors because they're all good. As a matter of fact, I'm not just an LS guy. As much testing as I've done on the LS, and I love it, I've done that much testing on small block Chevys, on big block Chevys, small block Fords, 351s, modular Fords, Coyotes, Gen 3 Hemis. The one area I haven't done too much on are small block and big block Mopar, but everything else, ton of testing, and I love it, including imports. Heck, I've got an RB25 motor sitting there just begging me to test it. And I'm really excited about it because there's so much misinformation out there. Guys testing stuff and telling them what works and what doesn't, they're usually wrong and they tell them the wrong thing. So I wanna test this and show them what actually works. And I do that for every combination because I'll try it and if it doesn't work, I can tell you guys about it. If it does work, I can tell you guys about it and everybody's better for it. Let's get to our combinations. 800 horsepower, LS, 4.8, all the way up to a seven liter. Let's get going. The first of our 800 horsepower combinations actually is a 4.8 <laughs> liter. And this is our Turbo 48. And it just goes to show you that this Turbo 48 can actually be any power level that you want to. All you have to do is change the boost, which is a great thing about a turbo. So this is a 4.8. This one had forged pistons, but factory rods and factory crank and factory block. We had just heard it a long time ago, so we had to put forged pistons in it. It had a set of JE pistons in it. Stock uh, 706 heads, valve spring, Brian Tooley Racing Stage 2 cam, but and that's a good cam, but lots of Stage 2 stuff will work equally well. This basically is a LS from the junkyard. I mean, it had forged pistons in it, but you could do the same thing with um, a stock one. From the junkyard with a, with a camshaft in it, it made 409 horsepower and 366 foot-pounds of torque. Here's what happens after we add our single Summit uh, S475 turbo. Look, 10 pounds of boost made 650, but I know what you're thinking. This is an 800 horsepower combination. Yeah, look, all we have to do is do this. Look, here's what happens when we added 12 pounds. Here's 14 pounds, so, so we're getting closer and closer. All the way up to 16 pounds on our 4.8, that was over 800 horsepower. It made 828 horsepower to be exact. And the torque was at, peak torque was 760 foot pounds of torque. So this combination did well. And obviously this isn't the limit of that combination. That S475 will go higher than that. And there's more power left. We could go up higher. I think that S475, that T6 from Summit Racing probably would support somewhere near a thousand horsepower in this combination. We could certainly get there. But for an 800 horsepower combination, cam, springs, boost, 4.8, you're on your way. Stepping up from the 4.8 liter, we're going to the 5.3 liter. And this was actually the Big Bang 5 liter. So after doing the 4.8 Big Bang way back in 2010 for Hot Rod and finding out it was a 4.8, uh, 
I decided to do a 5.3 and did that for Truck and Magazine. So we built a 5.3 and it was a healthy combination, stock bottom end, extra ring gap, put good heads on it. This one had um, TFS 215 heads on it, which were good. It also had a healthy comp cam. It was a 617, 624 lift, 231, 239, and a 113. It had an LSXRT intake manifold and a fat, yeah, the fast manifold. So heads came and intake based on the stock bottom end. This thing did good though. It made over 500 horsepower NA, 503. Torque was good, 442 foot pounds. So it was really good. But here's what happened after we, and we for this combination, we were running the big banks that we ran it all the way up to 26 or 27 pounds. But on this combination, we put two of the CX Racing 76 millimeter turbos that had an air to water intercooler on it. So here's what happened when we started adding boost to it. So we started off really low, five and a half pounds, but the thing was already making over seven or nearly 700 horsepower at five and a half pounds. Where were we at? Six. 696 or 697 torque was at 606 so it just goes to show you even just a little bit of boost on a already good combination makes a lot of power so here's what happened unfortunately for this when we were doing this combination we didn't really care about going up in each like little boost level because we were trying to get to find out where the stock bottom end was going to let go so our next combination we ran was actually 13 pounds and at 13 pounds, this thing made <laughs> over 900 horsepower, so it made 930 horsepower. So for your 800 horsepower combination on this particular 5.3, on this twin turbo 5.3, what you'd have to do is run somewhere near nine and a half or 10 pounds, and it would be right between these two, uh, right between the 13 pound boost and the five and a half pound boost range. Right in between there, at like nine or 10 pounds, you'd be over 800 horsepower because you got a good NA combination. So again, 5.3 cam springs a boost, although this combination had lots of good stuff on it. It was already making 500 horsepower NA, which is more than you need to do, but just like we saw with the 4.8, almost anything. <laughs> cam and springs and then the right amount of boost. If it doesn't make a lot of power NA, you add a little more boost. If it makes a lot, you don't have to run as much. But that's the combination. That's our 5.3. Now let's check out our next combination. Okay, our next combination, we skipped right over the 5.7 liter because I didn't have really good um, combinations to make uh, 800 horsepower on the 5.7 liter LS1 stuff on that early stuff. So we went right to the 6 liter and actually this is a stroker 6 liter. So we started with a 6 liter block and we bored and stroked it out to 408 inches, which is kind of common. So we went 30 over and added a 4 inch stroke. Actually the guys at ATK did this. This was a boost ready short block that they supplied and we put it to good use because it was a power router kind of deal. We added uh, a good set of LS3 heads, factory heads, but they had a valve spring upgrade. We had a comp uh, 54 470-11 cam, 621, 624, 235, 251, and 113. We also put on an Elbrock Victor Jr. single plane LS3 style intake, which works good, and a 750 carburetor. So quick with that combination, our 408, our low compression 408 stroke, this is low compression because it was a, a boost ready motor, made 565 horsepower and 514 foot pounds of torque. So after adding our NOS nitrous setup, it was a plate style system, easy to bolt on, no problem. Boom, over 800 horsepower with a peak there at the spike of 814 and peak torque 7. 763. We like nitrous because it does this. <laughs> Wherever you engage it, it adds that much power. So we had a uh, 555. So yeah, I think we had, I think this was like a 200 shot if I remember right. We usually get a little bit more than that when the tune is right. We took away uh, only four degrees of timing on this. We ran it on good gas. We put 100 and, and 91 on this thing and it worked really well. Good combination, good solid, you know, 800 horsepower deal, low compression, lots of nitrous. We could have run a lot more, but this is what we did. We're good. Stroker, nitrous, 800 horsepower. Let's check out our next combo.
Jumping up from the 6 liter to the 6.2 liter, this was actually an LS3 crate motor that we ran, and we had upgraded it with a camshaft. It's an LS3 crate motor from Gandridge Chevrolet. And we installed our fancy 54-469-11 comp cam. It was a 613-623, I think it's actually a 614-624. 231, 243, and a 113. This had the factory intake on it. So I actually did a comparison on this of uh, 317 heads versus the LS3 heads, and we did it both NA and under boost. But I'll show you, this is um, the NA combination, the canned LS3 basically. It made 584 horsepower and 523 foot-pounds of torque. So now let's take a look. We put a single turbo on this thing. And it produced 825 horsepower. And I think that I'll show you the, I'll put up the peak boost number, but I think it's it's like eight or nine pounds or something. This is a good combination. The interesting thing though is if we do a quick overlay on this, um, here's what happened when we had the 317 heads on this combination. This is the NA combination down here, you can see. With the 317 heads, it basically made less power everywhere than the LS3 head, which is not uh, unusual. And then when we added the boost, same thing happened. It basically made less power everywhere with 317 head. So uh, when people tell you that the cathedral port head is a better turbo head, um, that sort of generality is actually nonsense. A 317 head is not ideal for anything. Um, neither is the rec port head. They both do what they do. If one head makes more power than the other one NA, there's a really good chance that it does that under boost, which is exactly what we showed here. But for the 800 horsepower combination with the LS3 head, we were looking at 825, 826 at a fairly low boost level. It works really good. If you make a lot of power NA, it's really easy to get to any kind of boosted power at a lower boost pressure. Let's take a look at our next combo. Our final combination of <laughs> this 800 horsepower level is actually a naturally Asprey one, that's right. They're not all turbo, not all supercharged, and not all nitrous. This is an NA combination, but it's a big one. So finding out about the RHS block way back in the day, we did some calculations and figured out that we could run the right combination of bore and stroke, and this was a tall deck version of the RHS block. We could do the right combination to produce almost 500 cubic inches. As it turned out, our combination of a 4185 bore and a 4.5 inch stroke, it's a lot of stroke produced uh, 495 cubic inches. So, and there's a little bit more left to go on the bore size if we wanted to do that. And I think guys have gone even beyond that to, to push it over 500 inches and it works just fine. This combination was a flat top piston so it had high compression. It had the biggest shelf cam that Comp made at the time. I'll go ahead and put the specs up here. You guys can take a look at that. And it had a big single plane, the CNC ported single plane mast intake. As a matter of fact, it also had mast LS7 heads and the factory LS7 rocker. So it, it actually added cam lift because the rocker ratio on the LS7 is 1.8 instead of 1.7, which we normally see on the rest of the stuff. We also had a big uh, 1050 Dominator carburetor and engine 7 8 headers. So once that combination was all put together, our 495 NA, uh, 5, 495 inch NA motor produced 810 horsepower, which is, <laughs> which is nice and 726 foot-pounds of torque. You can see this thing produced peak power at uh, 6,600, so it wasn't revving very high, although the, we'd, we'd run this thing to 7,000 regularly without any problem. So we ran a bunch of testing on it. We ran a bunch of intake manifolds, a bunch of LS7 heads. As a matter of fact, if you take a look online, you can see, uh, do a search for LS7 head test hot rod, and you'll see I ran a number of different, different LS7 heads on this thing. And to show you how they did, versus a, a factory head, it did pretty well. So this is our 800 horsepower, final 800 horsepower combination, NA, along with all the turbo stuff, which one would you choose? Let's get to our conclusion. So what's our takeaway from all this? Well, there are a number of different ways to make 800 horsepower. We had turbo stuff, we had supercharged stuff, we had nitro stuff, and of course we had NA stuff. But you know what? There are guys out there making more than 800 horsepower, naturally aspirated. That's right. Check out the stuff the guys do over at SAM or Ben over at EFI University. Both of those guys make well north of 800 horsepower. The problem is, and I love those combinations because they're awesome, but they're also 
very expensive. Dedicated race motors that make over a thousand horsepower like the guys do over at Sam, that's a really expensive proposition. And trust me, I know, even my 800 horsepower combination, the 495 that I built, is no cheap date. But back in the day when I built that, I thought it was awesome that you could take an LS motor and make it bigger than the biggest <laughs> factory big block combination. Kind of a stealthy deal. I thought it was cool, but it wasn't cheap. So the takeaway here is if you want to make 800 horsepower and you want to do it cheaply, go with the old standby. Junkyard motor, cam, springs, and boost. I'm Richard Holder, guys. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell. I'll keep doing the videos. Next time up, we're going to 900.